Hello, my name is Joel Farson, and I'm going to read to you from my book, Rude Rage, Incivility in Verse. This chapter is entitled, Aspiring Down. Johnny didn't read Hardy or Poe. He didn't read Steinbeck, Dickens, or Stowe. If you gave him a book, he'd just take a nap. He couldn't find New Guinea if you gave him a map. Yo, that don't matter, I listen to rap. His music was angry and full of rage, with language, with language unfit for a boy of his age. He wore his pants low and sideways his hats. He had a goatee and a couple of tats. He walked like a rapper wherever he went, moving his hands to say what he meant. Bow wow wow, yo yo yo, guns and pimps and bitches and hoes. Please, how original, oh what a rebel. Turn up the bass, turn up the treble. So unique, so incredibly hip this baggy, branded ghetto trip. With a pit bull and an air of distrust, Johnny's got to look hard, that is a must. From the city street to the college dorm, everyone's trying not to conform. But when they all play this game, they all begin to look the same. They fail to grasp the enormity of this rebellion's mass conformity. They think they're sticking it to the man, but it's all part of a marketing plan. A clever scheme, it's Machiavellian, the mass marketing of rebellion. They don't even vote to change the laws. So many rebels without a cause. Some folks vote, rain or shine, but most don't want to stand in line. Some flee persecution in leaky, bo in leaky boats or risk their lives to cast their votes. Our soldiers die to spread democracy, but we don't vote? What hypocrisy. Johnny's never heard of Darfur or Rwanda, but he knew what he liked, his lowered Honda. Low profile tires and rims so fat, it did zero to sixty in five seconds flat. He zipped through town like a weasel to the smell of burning gas and diesel, passing cars on the right and following people close and tight. He sped down the freeway, through traffic he weaved, he tailgated people because he was peeved. Move your fat ass, you're driving too slow. My homies are waiting at a sideshow. A sideshow, for those of you who are curious, is like in the movie The Fast and the Furious, where bad boys gather in illicit places, spin cars and donuts and have little races, blasting their music into the night, drinking and driving and running red lights. Oh, the drama at these intersections could land you a month in county corrections. Bow wow, yeah, bow wow wow, yo yo yo. Guns and pimps and bitches and hoes. Oh, how their parents, parents wish they would grow up, or at least get away before the cops would show up. He's not from the ghetto. He's not from the hood. Where Johnny's from is really quite good. His mother sells real estate, strictly suburban. His father's a teacher who likes to drink bourbon. They raised him right, but Johnny is errant, the first generation to do worse than its parents. Though he didn't grow up in a slum, he liked to pretend that's where he was from. With his posturing and his slang, his goal in life was to be in a gang. He walked like a gangster, hanging hard in the ghetto, even when walking through a beautiful meadow. His mother would lecture, but Johnny would frown, a middle-class kid aspiring down. With shirt untucked and pants at his thighs, he stood there smirking and rolling his eyes. His dad is angry, his mom distraught, over his drinking and smoking of pot. Johnny responded, okay, but, or, simply, or sometimes simply yelled, so what? Entitlement culture is what he is fostering with his attitude and his posturing. Near Johnny's house are forests and hills where he could escape from society's ills. Take the dog for a walk, its tail wagging. He could learn about nature. Instead, he was tagging, marking his turf on city blocks instead of exploring rivers and rocks. He felt no attraction or devotion to the mountains or the ocean. Finding no solace in silent woods, he blares music through noisy hoods, covers walls with graffiti, and discards litter, he makes the town seedy. Folks who enjoyed walking through town feel like Michael Douglas in Falling Down. Instead of hiking through evergreen glades, Johnny roams malls and video arcades, he doesn't like beaches, tide pools, or grottos. He blows people's heads off playing Grand Theft Auto. Pulling triggers with fingers and thumb, he kills zombies until he is numb. I like video games. They're really fun, especially the ones where you shoot guns. 
for all his posturing and acting tough, he had the body of a cream puff, a little bit pudgy, a little bit pasty. He ate at McDonald's because it was tasty. A burger and fries is what he bought, and when he was done, threw his trash in the lot. Even though trash cans abound, paper bags were blowing around. Trash cans were there, but Johnny was lazy. Take my trash over there, you gotta be crazy. He won't walk to the can, says it's too far, so he throws his garbage out of his car. It's surely an insult to your fellow man when you don't use the garbage can. He thought his actions so benign, but Johnny really should pay a fine. It tends to make us feel bitter when the streets are full of litter. There's litter everywhere, because many people just don't care. Don't these people understand that America's not a wasteland? Whatever happened to kids with ambition, who did well in school and had good nutrition, who woke up early and delivered the news, who tucked in their shirts and polished their shoes? It's not that Johnny can't read. It's something he could do. He could finish books with speed. He just doesn't want to. School is seen as a grind, like feeding from a trough. The kind of work Johnny's assigned has turned Johnny off. When it comes to history, the sequence is a mystery. After 12 years, he takes a quiz, yet still doesn't know what an adverb is. By the time he finishes high school, he's turned off to knowledge. He's had about enough of school. Now it's time for college. Bow, wow, wow, yo, 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 guns and pimps and bitches and hoes. Johnny robbed a store one night and was caught. The police took him downtown to get his mug shot. His parents couldn't post bail, so they hired a counselor to help this young male. Look at me, Johnny, and you'd better listen. If you don't change, you'll end up in prison. The lady asked Johnny why he breaks the rules, and then asked his parents how, do he, how he does in school. Johnny doesn't read, doesn't care for academe, but we've tried so hard to build his self-esteem. Don't criticize him, said the frumpy educator. It's the job of the parent to be a motivator. Encourage his love of music. What instrument does he play? He doesn't play an instrument. He raps, like Dr. Dre. Then encourage his poetry. Perhaps he'll write a song. Well, he didn't write a thing until we took away his bong. He was supposed to write a paper on the Canterbury Tales. But what did Johnny write about? Gang culture in jails. His teacher explained this wasn't correct. So Johnny hit the teacher, you know perceived disrespect. Well, if he likes music, perhaps he can dance. Oh, he dances all right when given the chance. When there's a dance at the school gym, he sneaks in, the bo he sneaks in a bottle when the lights are dim and dances with girls in a manner of speaking, a depraved little number they like to call freaking.